Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about turning down offers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do you think that anyone has ever turned down a software engineering offer from the fan companies? If so, why do you think they did that? Well, I'm not sure about an offer, but like I... I mean, in theory, yes, I guarantee you that there are people who are turned down offers. I know I have friends who have turned down offers from the fan companies. Uh, I didn't even do go that far. I turned down the offer for an interview at Amazon, Facebook. Well, te Google never actually <laughs> called back. They did call a recruiter, but uh, and I said like, sure, we can talk about it, and then I never heard about it anyway. But yeah, something like that. Let's see here. Was there, I don't think I ever got in touch. There was someone from PayPal as well, so I don't know if that went anywhere. So, I mean, uh, for sure, but at least Amazon and Facebook, yes. And Facebook more than once. Uh, and the... Well, I can just speak for myself. The reason is very simple. Because in my case, it required me to... One part is to, of course, move. In this case, I think it was to Ireland. And that's fine. But I'm not going to move for a position that doesn't seem all that interesting. For one of the positions, what they were looking for was a... I don't know what it was. It was like a marketing coach or something like that. For fa for Facebook, I, yeah, I don't remember the specifics for the Amazon thing, but I think it was an internal thing. I think for Facebook, it was also one of their internal teams. But the one thing that I was like, definitely, I like, will give you a good example of of my point here is that they were looking for someone who had that were going to be like a fifth there was going to be a 50 50 split you're going to do 50 percent according to the specification of the role right so 50 percent coding and 50 percent educating their customers in how to use their ads and like their ad system and the platform for doing ads and facebook things uh, like uh, uh, all of that good stuff right and like my my immediate response was like yeah it's very flattering that you're like that I heard from you I mean I don't assume that I would make it through the interview but uh, I'm not interested in this because I'm actually going to work at, I'm working right now at the company where I will work with things that I find more stimulating or it's a role that is better for my long term career and see this is the thing that I think that a lot of people seem to completely um, like kind of miss you get uh, and you I mean you're of course going to deny it just as all the people who are into uh, into fashion deny that it's the brand of the clothes that matter to them and the prestige of that brand if you have ever said this well no i just care about quality i call bullshit i call complete bullshit just own what you are a shallow egomaniac that knows that social status uh, can get a quite hefty boost if you just have the right brand it's the same thing in it it's uh, you get so focused on that you can put Amazon or Netflix or whatever on your CV that you don't even think about what the fuck you're going to do in that company. Because the as I, I know for a fact that if you work in a company such as say Amazon or Facebook or in my case it wasn't one of these companies but it was a company at that scale, it it's not it, it, what you do is what matters. You think that everything is super fun in Google? You think that everybody's just having a big fucking party over there and learning things that nobody else could possibly imagine? I promise you that's not the case. And for myself, if, we, if I had taken the 50 50 split type of thing, I would have actually gotten further away from my personal goal of being a really good software developer. Because the role was not a pure software developer's role. It was a hybrid type of thing. And sure, you might be able to spin that in a good way in a company such as Facebook. And sure, if you really wanted to transition from being a full-time coder to being more of a fluff person or like a marketer or whatever, it might have been a good opportunity. But I'm not interested in that. I want to be more involved in the coding and architecture and like systems development and so forth. So the position was a complete, like it was a big no-no for me. It was the, it was the worst possible. Like it had no, I had no interest. It doesn't. It didn't matter that it was Facebook. It was because there was like a, the. If I had taken that job, I would have literally only done so so that I could get the brand of that company on my CV. And I think that a lot of people underestimate how aware these companies are of their own brand value and how aware they are of how many of you are dying to get that on your CV 
because of the prestige. Do you think that, like you mean, guys, everybody's aware of it, literally everybody, and that's why they can have outlandish recruitment processes and code interviews and all this stuff because they have invested a fuck ton of money in, f in making sure that you feel as if the highest purpose in your life, the biggest achievement, could be, is to be scrubbing the latrines at Google. And for the people who have woken up from the brainwashing a little bit, well, they realize that, sure, you are at Google, but you're still cleaning the fucking toilets. So what I want you to take away from this is that there are plenty of people who have turned down opportunities at companies such as Amazon or Fang companies and so forth because one part is that they don't necessarily pay the highest. I actually have an old friend who works at Saab and uh, that is by, f by in no means at all the he heftiest and trendiest IT company around for sure and he's turned down offers from the Fang companies many times because they're not paying as well because he has a really good position so why, 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 would, he, why would he care? And the second reason, which is just is applicable to me, and I promise you it's applicable to more people than myself, I know so for a fact that that's the case because my, my own boss actually had the same reason, he wanted to start his own thing, he wanted to do his own thing instead of going and working for like these sorts of companies. So what I'm saying is that uh, even if a company such as one of the fan companies is calling you up, you actually should, if you take my advice at the very least, look at what the position is about. Because if you're not going to do real software engineering, well, then, yeah, sure, you'll get that thing on your CV. And that's going to give you a wow factor. And maybe for a little while, maybe for a few years, or maybe even longer than that, because I'm very sorry to say that there are some pathetic people out there who are, like in their mi who are middle-aged and still referencing that they went to Harvard in every other conversation. I'm very sorry that that was the hi highlight of your life. Uh, you will feel good about that. And that's great. But uh, unless you're getting the skills to actually survive, you're still gonna be like you're gonna be at that company forever, or they're gonna fire you at some point, and then you're gonna be pointless to the rest of the industry because that's usually how it goes. Everybody outside of a Google company and so forth, they might in some cases be very impressed that oh you've been at Google or so forth and so forth, but you're still gonna do the code test. And if you fail that fucking thing, trust me, the fall is a lot farther the higher up people think that you should be. Have a great day.